All right, guys, let's talk about the tools we need to do scalping properly, okay? Let's talk about this. First thing we need, we need a two minute chart. Yes, a two minute chart. You can alternatively use a five minute chart, but I prefer that you use a two minute chart for this, okay? Two minute, five minute, your choice, but I lean more a little bit toward the two minute chart. Let's take a look at a two minute chart of Microsoft today. This is Microsoft's two minute history looks like for up until midday today, all right? So this is a two minute chart of Microsoft where every single bar represents two minutes of trading. Obviously the red bars represent um, the two minute periods that were down, all right? So it started higher, ended lower, and the green bars represent two minute periods where the stock ended, started lower, ended higher, right? Simple, okay, two minute chart. The next thing we need, we need to overlay a 20 period simple moving average. Now, I have been trading for a very long time, studying markets for a very long time. And I will tell you that I've experimented with all types of moving averages. And in my experience, the sexier varieties of moving averages have no real distinct advantage over the simple. Now, if you want to go to you know, the 20 period exponential, the 20 period weighted, knock yourself out. It's not that different anyway, right? Moving averages are areas. They're not specific little skinny lines as your trading platforms would have you believe, okay? But I use simple and I use those simple moving averages on the closing prices of the bars, okay? Just wanna let you know, this thing bothering me here. All right, so 20 period simple moving average here. Now I'm taking that, I'm taking, um, here's a two minute chart of BABA. I am overlaying a 20 period moving average on the chart. This is averaging the last 20 closing bars. So now guys, just so you know, and I know many of you know this, what a moving average does is help you to iron out the wrinkles in a stock's trend. So in the old days, they, they actually used to call moving averages trend lines because their purpose is to really keep you focused on the prevailing trend. So if that 20 period moving average is declining, it doesn't matter if there's a green bar or two in the midst of the stock's performance, the trend overall is down, right? So it won't matter, for instance, let me just show you this. Let me, let me bring up my, my trusty, uh, what is this here? My trusty little pen here. And so look at this. It doesn't matter if there's a green bar here. See these green bars? that the overall trend of the moving average keeps you honest, keeps you honest in your overall assessment. I don't care if there's green, that trend is down. The green is not going to affect me. The green is not going to trick me. As long as that 20 period moving average is down, I'm thinking down, I'm thinking negative, you understand? So that's the purpose of a 20 period moving average. Here, it, here's the 20 period moving average started to rise, right? So it says, I don't care right now if there's some red here, the overall prevailing trend is up. So that's the overall purpose of moving averages, to keep you honest in your assessment of what the overall prevailing trend is. Is it a perfect indicator? No, there's no such thing as a perfect indicator. But as a general guide to trend analysis, you can't beat moving averages. And the 20 period moving average, in my opinion, is amongst the most important. There are two really key moving averages. So we've got the 20 period moving average there, right? Okay, now, the next thing we need, we need to overlay a 200 period simple moving average. So whenever you're using moving averages, guys, you wanna always have a short one and a long one you should never really look at just a one moving average chart. You need a longer term view, the 200, and you need a shorter term view, the 20 period moving average. And that's what we have here. Moving averages are best utilized in, term, in the form of a buddy system. Do you understand? A buddy system. So short, long, 20, 200, or 13, 200 or eight 200, we use a variety of them, but 20 and 200 are the basic two. And I would say, I would go as far as saying, you don't really have a viable chart that you're looking at unless you have these two moving averages on the chart. So let's take a look at the 20 period moving average on BABA overlaid. So now we have a two minute chart, each bar representing two minutes of trading. 
and you've got a 20 period moving average overlaid and you've got a 200 period moving average overlaid and these two moving averages are operating in a buddy like system now in previous presentations i've spoken to you about using these two moving averages for my space concept so whenever your stock your 20 and your 200 are spaced apart you are looking for a reversal okay and this can happen on the downside as well you can have the stock way down here separated from the 20 separated from the 200 and you'd be looking for a reversal back to the upside but notice how this morning this is today's activity baba opens separated from its 20 and the 20 itself is separated from the 200 leaving behind what we call a dual space reversal event okay so my traders would be taught to actually go bet to the downside on a play like this but they would first have to see green get eliminated by red all right and so here's the last green bar red eliminates green they would short here betting on the downside stop above the green protect themselves above the green and benefit all the way back to the 20 period moving average where now the stock guys is closing the gap between itself and the 20 period moving average Clo gap close done trade over okay but that's actually a different topic. We're gonna to talk about scalping. Now, let's go on to, let's see, what am I supposed to show you next? We, so we, we got the, we got the uh, that's wrong. That's not a monthly chart, guys, this is wrong. We got a two minute chart. We got a 20 period moving average on the two minute chart. We got a 200 period moving average on that chart. Now we need a strong move. What do I mean by a strong move? I have to demonstrate this for you. This is very important. This is a very important component, right, of this thing. So let's say, for instance, we've got, I'm going to paint this. Uh, should I do it? Let's do it red. So a strong move down. Boom. That's a strong move. Now, in this strong move, guys, if you're going to play against this strong move, what do I mean by play against this strong move? What I mean is that if you're going to look to buy somewhere after this decline, buy, if you're looking to buy, your odds are not very great because of the power of the down move to the left. So think about this, guys. Think about this. This move to the downside is very powerful. All right, this move to the downside is powerful. So it means that any up move that you make, right, any up move after this is going to have to fight what's to the left of it, which is red. All right. So now some moves will actually make it all the way back to the beginning of the drop, the decline. But how many out of 10 tries Will the bounce after a strong drop? How many times will a move come all the way back? I'm going to tell you one time. Let's do this very quickly. Da, 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 da. One out of 10 will go all the way back to the top of the move. This is very important to understand. And then we're going to go to chart so I can show you this, right? So strong drop rally all the way back recuperating the decline 100 percent one out of ten okay now let's say 75 let's do this 75 so this is the 100 percent level right all right it's important let's say 75 percent back up uh -uh, that's wrong 75 percent 75% instead of 100%. How many? Two out of 10. All right, interesting. So look, guys, one, let's do it like this. So 100% 
all the way back, you're going to get one out of 10. All right. One out of 10. I had to mess that up. But anyway, you get the point. So one out of 10 goes 100%, 75%, two out of 10. Now check this out. Something interesting happens here at 50%. Now your numbers go big. At 50%, your numbers go six out of 10. Wow. So six times out of every 10 tries, the bounce back up after a decline will retrace 50% of the decline. So now you're a profitable trader if you control your downside, just going for 50%. Wow. You're not a profitable trader going for 75% of the way back up. You're not a profitable trader going 100% of the way back up. You're a profitable trader if you control the downside, you're a profitable trader at 50%, only going for 50% retracement. A stock drops, buy it, 50% back up, out. Six times out of every 10. But check this out. This is the most interesting. This is the most interesting traders, right? So now let's go to 33%. No, let's go to 25%. Now, 25%, right? 25% of the way back up. Look what happens. Boom! <laughs> so look. 20, if you go after 25% of the way back up, you're right nine times out of every 10 tries. Wow. Wow. Now you're super profitable as a trader. So where do you think a scalper wants to live his life? Where do you think he wants to dedicate himself to 100% going after the one out of 10, going after the 75%, going after 50. No, he lives in that 25% move back up, 25% move back up, 25% move back up, 25% move back up. Boom, 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 boom. Nine times out of every 10, you're going to get that 25% move back up. And so that's what scalping is. It is sacrificing, right? the possibility of a 100 which is going to come every now and then if you're lucky but living in that world where i get the time 10 i just got to control that one time that it doesn't work nine times out of every 10 nine times out of 10 this is scalping same thing on the downside same concept on the downside but let's go to charts now i'm going to show you show you this it's going to get really interesting, guys. Let's go to charts now, right? Let me see how I do this. Let's see. I am going to share. I think I do it like this. Boom. There we go. Okay. My trading platform here, right? So what I need to do, guys, I need to put, I, I told you, I need to put the 20 period. We're going to put a 20 period simple moving average on there. I'm going to make that blue. Let's make that blue. Do it right in front of your faces. All right. 20 period moving average on Microsoft right there, right? Then I'm going to put the 200 period moving average on there. Let's do that. It doesn't, it's not really relevant to us today, but let's just do it anyway. All right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that 200 on there. Keep that red. Boom. Okay, good. Now, look, I want you to know, remember that, remember what I told you, right, about space? That was a different talk that I did on my concept with space, but I just want to bring your attention to that real fast, right? Like, look at how, look at Microsoft opens, where it opens in relationship to the 20 and how 20 is separated from the 200. So you see that, that th those layers of space, right? That space, dual layers of space, space one, and space two. And whenever we get these dual layers of space, we bet the other way because the market doesn't like space. It narrows space. So now see, there's no space. So once there's no, see, we started off with space. Now we go to no space. Look at all three items. Look at your stock. Look at your 20 period moving average and look at your 200. There's zero space now. Now we go back the other way. Crazy, right? 
Amazing. Okay. So, but that's a different topic. We're talking about scalping now. Now, I want you to take a look at this drop. This is one fluid drop. It's interrupted by a, 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 a certain number of green bars, but the fluid move to the downside is down, right? Now, if you want to try to buy the bottom of that, you can't expect more. If you want high accuracy, you can't expect more than, remember those levels, right? 25% if you want your accuracy. So scalping is a counter trend approach to grab a quick pop in the markets. You're going after 25% of this is 100% all the way back up. So if your stop had the ability to come all the way back up, that's one time out of 10, or two times out of 10, or halfway, six times out of 10, but 25%, you're gonna get that nine times out of 10 tries. And so the scalper goes against that flow, but just for 25% out and can literally make his entire living on a scalp. All they do is look for, all scalpers do is look for a drop, all right? A sharp drop, boom. Let me do that a different color. That's better on a different color here, right? So boom, look at the bounce, you see? Not all the way up here, you're not gonna get that. That's the sucker's play, bounce, drop back. Now, look, Drop, bounce, 25%. Look at this. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. Let me show you. All right. Drop. Here's one fluid drop. Bounce. There's your 25%. You're not getting 100%. You're not getting 75%. You're not getting half. Boom. Now, here's something really interesting. Check this out. I need to demonstrate this for you. This, is, this gets me so excited. You have no idea. So check this out. When you get a drop that goes way past the 50% level, right? Now this is way past, not 100, but it gets really high past 50%. The next drop usually will not be a new low down here. This drop will turn and that's when you trade, you don't scalp this bottom here. You see, the scalp play, if you want, is there. The trade is here, where you want to hold on to that one longer than the scalp. This is going to go further than 25%. This is going to likely go bigger than 50% of the way back up. You understand? So let me demonstrate this again. This is important to understand. Drop, 25%, new low. But drop, 60%. 70%, no new low. And this becomes a trade, not a scalp. Okay, very different. You got to know what's a trade and you got to know what's a scalp opportunity. And knowing the difference between these plays does increase your accuracy, guys, does increase your accuracy. So look, we drop, boom. That does not get past that 50% level of this drop, right? It doesn't. So we're going to new lows. Now look, drop, here's now a, an up, up movement, up movement, up movement. That up movement does not get past 50%. We're going to new lows. But wait a minute, check out this last one. Check out this last one. Look at this drop. Now take this drop, split it in half. It goes way past the 50% level, you see? We break through the 50% level, right? Now, this drop does not make a new low. Now, we want to think about a trade, all right? We want to buy green when it takes out red. We want to buy green when red. We want to buy green. Boom! Very different. So here's the scenario, guys. Here's the scenario that I need you to understand. When you got drops, let's do this a different color. When you have declines, right? You got to watch how they bounce, right? Because if they bounce marginally, that's a new low scenario. But 
if your drop bounces way past 50%, this down here becomes a potential buy opportunity for a trade. Now, this is your scalp trade for a quick 25% if you, if you want to try that. Or this becomes your real longer term trade intraday, longer than a scalp, more than 25% when your rallies break significantly past that 50% level, right? And so you need to keep these percentages in mind. I can show you this on another chart. Check this out. Let's, let's go to something else. Let's, I'm bored with Microsoft. Let's go to, uh, what do we do here? Let's go to, I don't know, Baba. All right. Hey, Oliver, just wanted to give you the five minute warning. Yes. Oh, I got the five minute warning. All right. So check this out, guys. Check this out. So we've got Baba this morning. This is this morning. Okay. You've got, look, you've got separation, separation, separation. We're betting this way. But check this out, guys. This is amazing. We drop, look at the bounce. Not, this is the halfway mark, right? Here's your halfway mark. Here's your 25% mark. Boom, new lows, okay? Now check this out though. This is interesting. Now let's take this drop, okay? Now let's split that in half. You go past the 50% level, so now there's no new low. This green taking out red can be a quick buy, if you like. So I, I, I just want you to be able to understand the probabilities are very important, traders. After a drop, all right, if it's a sharp drop, there can be a buy opportunity there but you can't expect more than 25% if you wanna be consistent and accurate, okay? If that bounce is less than 50%, odds are huge that the next decline goes to a new low. If that rally goes further than 50% by a lot, all right, then that pullback sets up a nice trading opportunity for you. And we utilize this tactic all day long, every single day, 50%, 25%, 50%, 25%. And I want you to do that as well.